This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skin. What is going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, a few weeks ago, I covered the Can Commander by Michael Kukinich. Now, the Can Commander was a GPIO card for the Flipper Zero that allowed the Flipper Zero to interface directly with the car's CAN bus system. Once you're connected to the car's CAN bus system, pretty much the world is your oyster. You can do whatever you want with the car at that point. Well, what we're talking about today isn't that. Now, this device, disguised as an innocuous Game Boy, actually wirelessly attacks a vehicle in order to gain access. Now, I'll go into the details later, but the reason why I wanted to make this video is because there's a ton of misinformation going around about this. I keep seeing comments like, oh, Flipper Zero can do that, or people saying that that's just a hack RF. Well, it's not, and I think it's important to differentiate these devices and really take a look at what's going on here. Because in my opinion, the best way to safeguard yourself from attacks like this is to, at the very least, understand how it works. So today, we're going to try to figure out exactly what's going on here. All right, that's enough intro. Let's check it out. First off, a huge shout out to Rabbit and Fox from Rabbit Labs for hooking me up with this awesome t-shirt. If you're interested in any t-shirts or apparel, let me know in the comment section down below. Maybe we can get a limited run going. So right up top, I won't be providing links or anything to show you guys where to get any of this stuff. I'm not trying to teach anybody how to do this. I just want to spread awareness as to how this whole thing works. Now, this attack vector does not affect every single make and model of vehicle, and this kind of attack has actually been swirling around for a while now. But I've seen this thing going through the headlines recently, so I really wanted to show people what's going on. Now, car manufacturers Kia and Hyundai have actually been under fire for similar types of attack in the recent past. The Kia boys were thieves who were using USB devices in order to compromise vehicles. The ironic slash interesting part about this is that they weren't actually plugging the USB into the computer or anything. No, they were actually just popping out the ignition and using the USB basically as a screwdriver to turn the key. So this means they were able to get into the car. A lot of times it's just because people leave their car unlocked, which seems absolutely crazy to me. I mean, I live in a small town and people are constantly getting their cars broken into. I don't know why people think that they can just leave their car unlocked. It's wild. The main problem with these vehicles is that they lacked an immobilizer that would stop the car from being started when the key wasn't present. The fact that they failed the most basic of features is kind of mind-blowing to me, honestly. Now, requiring physical access to the inside of a vehicle obviously is a little bit of a challenge sometimes. The thieves want to be quick and silent when it comes to compromising these vehicles. Trying to bypass or pick a lock or break a window can take time, it can be loud, plus that leaves a thief driving around with a car with a busted window. So what they're doing now is they've got a device that looks pretty much just like a Game Boy that they can use to wirelessly attack the vehicle. This device essentially tries to brute force its way into the vehicle. So what happens is you initiate a handshake basically by touching a doorknob or something like that, and then it runs through an algorithm of codes until it finds the right one to complete the handshake. One of the interesting things is once it completes the handshake, then pretty much it is the key. Now, if anybody's actually tried to do a brute force attack, you know it can take a pretty long time. For instance, the Flipper Zero has a brute force library for a couple of different garage doors. While I haven't actually tried to compromise a door with it, I have run the entire sequence before, and that took like 20 minutes. However, that was just a brute force list of codes. What you can actually do is run an algorithm called the Debrugian sequence in order to make that so much faster. So of course, now you may be asking, what is a Debrugian sequence? Now it is a little complicated, but I'll try to make it as simple and watered down as possible. In the simplest terms, a Debrugian sequence is an optimized list of numbers, which will go through every single possibility of numbers in the shortest time possible. Now it does this by taking advantage of the fact that most of these systems are only only listening for the correct series of numbers. So let's say your password is one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. That's amazing. I've got the same combination on my luggage. So your car is looking for the sequence one, two, three, four, five, and it really doesn't care what comes before or after. The car will unlock if it hears zero, one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five, six. So what the Debrugian sequence is, is it takes all of the potential passwords and overlaps them so it makes all of the possibilities happen in a much shorter list. So if your password's one, two, three, four, five, 
or two, three, four, five, six, you can have both of those covered in one, two, three, four, five, six. So instead of trying two five digit passwords, all you have to do is try one six digit password. It's actually really fascinating how they make this to the Brugian sequence. So for all you math nerds out there, there are a ton of great videos on YouTube. So check them out. Anyway, so the device runs a De Brugian sequence. And then when the handshake is completed, the device knows that it has the right key. And again, once the handshake's completed, it has complete control, just like the key would. It means you can unlock the doors, start the car, whatever. Now, unfortunately, right now, it seems like the list of cars is Kias and Hyundais again. Now, these aren't even older vehicles. A lot of these are actually current vehicles. So let's go through the list. For Kia, we have the Nero 2, the EV6, the Seed, the X Seed, the Pro Seed, the K5, the K3, the Forte, and the Serato. Now, for Hyundai, we have the EV6, which is the one that's been making headlines headlines and the Genesis GV60. Now I did do some digging and I actually was able to find a website that sold these devices. And if I can find it, anybody can. It wasn't even on the dark web or anything. Now the website actually found selling these things I definitely wouldn't want to send my money to. It is super sketchy and yeah, I definitely think it could very well be a scam or a honey pot. Yeah. And these things are going for thousands of dollars. It's not like buying a Flipper Zero or a Hack RF. These things are real money. So of course the question now is what do we do? Well, first off, obvious, don't buy a car on the list, especially if you live in a high crime area. But what do you do if you already own a vehicle on this list? Now the easiest and most obvious answer would be to only park your car in a secured area. Of course, that's not always practical. Not everyone has a garage and a lot of people, such as myself, tend to fill their garage with junk, making it almost impossible to actually park a car in there. Another slightly less convenient option would be to completely disable keyless entry. Now on most of these vehicles that are affected on the list, you can actually disable keyless entry by pressing and holding both the lock and the unlock buttons for four seconds on the key fob as long as you're within range of the vehicle. Now this should disable keyless entry and then you'll have to use a physical key to enter the vehicle. Now of course this is a huge pain in the ass because most of the vehicles have basically trim pieces that go over the keyhole and it's actually kind of hard to even get the physical metal key out of the fob. I'd venture to guess that most people don't even know that inside most of your key fobs is a physical key. But aside from that, it's really up to the vehicle manufacturers to do something about this. What a lot of vehicle manufacturers are actually doing is using the vehicle's VIN or vehicle identification number as part of their password sequence. Effectively, it's kind of like password salting. Password salting is what most online services use when they're storing your password in order to make it much harder to decrypt. It basically attaches a random sequence of numbers before your password is hashed, making it much more complicated to decrypt. Now for Kia and Hyundai, this little tiny thing could make it a lot more complicated to actually compromise these vehicles. And in their defense, many of their vehicles actually do use this type of security. However, it does seem like it's the same vehicle manufacturers that are having the same problems, so they really need to step up their game. Hackers and thieves will forever be trying to figure out the next zero-day exploit, so, you know, it's really just a cat and mouse game. It's really just the nature of security, red team versus blue team. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If anybody has any topics they'd like to see me cover, leave a comment down below. As always, you guys are absolute legends. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. You guys are the best. We'll catch you next time.